Hello, YouTubers. It's Travis. Welcome back. This is week two of Anti League. If you missed week one, you should probably go back and watch week one. But if you're really lazy, what's happening is we've got six friends together that are going to play Magic on MTG Arena. They've built decks out of six packs of each uh, set that's in standard. Uh, they have a limited supply of basic lands and they are playing for Anti. That is, the winner of each match will be taking a card at random from their opponent's deck that they get to keep and build with, and we're building towards a tournament uh, that you'll be able to see here next week. This week, we've just got a couple more rounds of round robin play. There's three rounds. I've got three matches to share from you for that, and we'll be looking, uh, for, like I said, for the tournament for next week. So this is kind of them like jockeying for position as to who will get buys in the tournament. We'll have to play all three rounds and taking more cards from each other so that they can get their deck closer to its final form for battle. If you've been enjoying Anti-League and some of these other uh, formats we've been producing lately, like the History of Draft, etc., uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, comments are fuel for YouTube creators, uh, so go ahead and type one down there. Let me know something, and consider subscribing if you really like it. Thank you for watching, and enjoy today's Anti-League. All right, here we go. Welcome to week two of Anti-League. We are watching the Mana League versus Nobody. I selected this match to show you because there are some interesting cards up for grabs. The Mana League has an Armory Veteran, and he has not yet won a game with this deck, so it would be kind of nice for him if he can pull that off, that the Armory Veteran is his ante. Nobody, who we saw in action last week, I believe has a land up for grabs which is kind of a big deal in this format. So I guess what's up for grabs isn't a big deal. I just really wanted to see if the Mana League could get there. Early game, he's got the Outlander attacking. We've got a Berserker on the other side. It looks like there might be an up dog to trade or perhaps just an up dog to swing back. Vampire's Kiss, all right. What's up, dog? Because it's Bounding Wolf and it jumps up. Elected not to play the Nectar Pot because we're going to do Clear Shot, get that out of the way, attack, and venture into the dungeon. I can respect this line. It's been a while since we've ventured, hasn't it? The Scry does seem pretty valuable here. If he's able to do it again, he can get a token. He's probably just interested in finding another red. And it's going to be hard for me to bottom that Frostbite. The solid removal spell. There's a very good turn for the Mana Lake. Nobody's under the gun. And he's got some card selection here. Pitching a land to a blood token. Now, it's worth remembering that the Mana Lake is not going to be able to venture into the dungeon next turn. He'll need to get the Nectar Pot in play and then attack with it to get another venture. That will give him the treasure token he needs to cast the Ballista Watcher. Right now, nobody's got a bunch of nothing going on. A Novice Occultist is not likely to help. Is that worth frostbiting? It is if you're the Mana Lake. That is indeed a big play. Is it worth doubling down for the Wolf Strike? is if you're the Mana Lake, we want to get damage through. Was that a two for one? I can't tell. I think we just traded a bunch of cards. The problem could happen here if nobody is able to just play a five drop and stabilize. It's a pretty stabilizing five. All right, John's drawn the champion. He's checking creature types to see if it's going to be a 4-3 or not. He's probably going to elect to just attack here, which I, I respect. I just hate getting rid of the Outlander. Okay, we're not getting rid of the Outlander. That's good. Nobody rethinking the blocks. Deciding not to chomp. I like that plan. Got the Expedition Champion. Uh, the Outlander is a Ranger, not a Warrior, so we will not be venturing into the dungeon next turn either. 
right? And nobody's got some ground creatures going. So we're now reaching the board stall part of the game. I'm just really no interest in anything other than aggro cards go burr. Smart money's on blocking this one. I agree. I don't know that a pair of one threes do it. This is really interesting. If John can hit a red source, he might be set up to win. How many does he have? Five, six are left in the deck. Uh, there's a blue red tapped snow land as well as five mountains that he could draw. Like, he's got three islands in this deck to splash for his Curse of Surveillance, but they're also there just to be basics because he doesn't have enough red sources. This Reaper's Talisman is not helping. All right, the Nectar Pot sort of keeps this life race in control. Mage Hunter kind of shuts down John's offense. Oh, this is not a good sign. He may just be dead. That's how good the Reaper's Talisman was. Kind of think back to those lines. And Mask of Gristlebrand is helping too. John is communicating that he's very sad which I think is very reasonable. So he's got one turn to find 11 damage. That is not 11 damage. He can be at five, but that doesn't really help either. If he'd hit the double red, I think he may have had that. I also think there's a there's possibilities of him being more patient and trying to get the treasure token uh, from the ranger. Not much of a sideboarding decision here for John. He's ready to get right back into the action. We can briefly peek and see if nobody's stream is working because he looks to be thinking, nah, he's, he's made his decisions. Okay. Back at it. That's Iron Man magic, right, Dave? I think I've heard of that. This is our opener. There's again no red mana. We do have a Direwolf Prowler on three. I would keep this, but it is worth remembering there's only six red sources in the stack. And that Armory Veteran in this opener is up for grabs. The mana's not great in John's deck. He's lost some basics in some of the fights. A two drop is pretty much a godsend for him, even if it's a nectar pot. Might of the old ways could be okay. I don't have standings yet because we're not in the tournament part. Uh, but you can comb through the Discord if you want to. I'll be releasing everything on uh, YouTube so you can watch it there. And Mac, you've got everything sorted. I need an anti-roll for you and PM that to me and then you can play the mist. Yeah, you miss can play. Go ahead. This is a good attack from John. I like this. He's got the combat trick if they block. He can also use his mana by foretelling Crush the Week if he'd like to, which I think I would do here. I'm sure this is going to mill two mountains. No, but it did mill one of the, the red sources. That Mage Hunter is kind of a house. Now, if John attacks again, he's going to be communicating that he definitely has something. I, although, I guess you could just give the Death Touch to the Prowler. So, this is an interesting turn. 
Drawing the red mana really changes things for John. I think he was hoping that the Mage Hunter would block. Wondering Archaic coming down. John electing to immediately cast his combat trick, which is probably not what he wanted to do there. He's now in a position where he probably needs to get rid of the Archaic, but he kind of can't. We could do something like Frostbite it and then crush the weak, but this onslaught of four force from nobody is starting to look a little scary. Direwolf Prowler is not the Death Touch Wolf, you say. Which one is it then? Let's find out. Oh, it's the one you can pump. Okay. It's still functionally the same thing. It's going to make it so that uh, nobody doesn't want to block it. These are very reasonable and good attacks. But it, it's also nobody communicating, I got something. Or I didn't know what Direwolf Prowler was either, which is fine. Smooch. We are getting a decent amount of life from the Nectar Pot. I'm wondering when he's going to be ready to fire off this Crush the Week. I like the attack first. This is good. Those are very reasonable blocks. Got a feeling this is not going to go well for John. Because he kind of has to fire off the Frostbite and the Crush the Weak. Which is, because of the archaic tags, it's not going to give him enough mana. I wonder if he wanted to let him activate it here. I mean, you can probably let them copy that one if they want to, eh? I guess it also doesn't matter. So this leaves nobody with a 3-4 and John with a 1-3. We do have a removal spell for the 3-4. And we've actually got the best mana we've seen John having until the 6-5 comes down. We can burn that out of the way. Yeah, the, the Pump on the Wolf is 3, though, so I don't think he could really pull that off especially with the Archaic Tags. Seeing the Kazandu Stomper pick up a land and then discarding it to a Blood Token makes me happy. But John doesn't actually have choices here. We have to burn the Accursed Stomper. It's going to kill us. Not sure why not attack, but I guess because right now one point of damage doesn't matter that much. But it's worth sneaking a point in where you can. Oop. Ah, uh, we got some good top decks happening here from Nobody. This is really bad news for the Mana Lake. Okay, so he could conceivably pass, let it flip, Vastwood Fortification and Wolf Strike. Something, something? I, I don't like where this is going for my buddy, the Mana Lake. I think nobody may have just taken his card.
Oh god, don't tell me there's instant speed removal. That would be too much. <laughs> Let's go to one. Let's not go to one. Game over, man. Nobody takes the first round off of the Mana League, and we're another card short for the Mana League. Be interesting to see if he can stabilize. All right, here we go. We've got the Mist versus Big Mac. The Mist had the scary Soul Tide deck from last week. He has a Canopy Bayloth up for Ante. Big Mac has a Naya deck. And his Saw Blade is up for Ante. So good creatures, actually good 4-3s for both of them up here. We see a quick keep from the Mist. And not bad. We've got a 2-drop. We've got Midnight Ambush if we need to kill something. We've got a Dawnhard Disciple. We've even got a Field Trip. Uh, we see a Lorehold Campus come down from Mac. So presumably he's going to have a decent mana base here. Mist land drop for the Mist may be an issue. Uh, for reference, the Mist did not drop any matches last week. We've still got good removal. We're just missing the lands. Mac managing to find his Weaver of Blossoms, which is going to give him access to a lot of mana. And we've got a couple different removal spells here, but none of them can take care of it unless we're willing to ba Baleful Mastery it, uh, which will give Mac a card. So we're going to consider here setting him back on mana, but setting him up on cards. Oh, and we've whiffed again for Mist. This is potentially the only way he can lose, because his deck's really good. It has now flipped into Night, so the Midnight Ambush can kill something significantly larger. So as, as far as things to be okay about, that's one of them. Hitting this land drop is great. We can go Weaver, we can go Field Trip, we can go Roper. We've got a lot of options here. I think I, I think I like the Weaver. There's some argument for the Field Trip, although I don't know what lessons he has in the sideboard. All right, turn five for Mac. He's gonna need to do something with his five mana. And it's going to be, need to be something that the Midnight Ambush can't just take out. And that's not a bad one. That card's basically Moldrifter. Because it's nighttime, we could just play the Diagraph Horde here. But I don't hate Go Fetch a Land. Potentially a Lesson card if he has one. He does. And then just Midnight Ambush this out of the way. Yeah, the challenge is I don't know where he's going to get the life to, um, huh, opting not to kill it. That's interesting. I don't know where he's going to get the life to untap it. All right, here's one of the better cards from Mag Stack is the Glorious Sunrise. That makes sense. He wants to keep it on night. Okay. Thank you, Alexis. I didn't quite catch that. I was perhaps overvaluing the two damage. Probably going to have to gain some life here. All right, Mist looks to be in a commanding position to me right now. We've got a lot of options. We could play the Diagraph Horde. We could just attack for five and play the Shady Traveler, which will come into play flipped. This looks like a very commanding position. That makes sense too, Jacques. I, I didn't quite understand what the delay was, but it, like missing that two damage last turn turned into a heap of tempo advantage for the Mist. I think that was a really good call. Mac electing to get a lot of mana. What is he going to do with it? He's going to play a 6-6. Six, six. And we're going to imprison the Predator, turning it back into Knight. That's not going to work out as well as he might have hoped, although it does stop some damage. We've got a Gargantua to explode away the pacified creature, and another two comes in. 
That was a solid turn for Mac and a solid answer by the Mist. I was convinced the Mist was in trouble. He does not appear to be in trouble at all. all right, we've got a shield mate and a warrior for Mac. That does not look like enough to do much, but could be a start. The draw for the turn is a Restless Bloodseeker for Mist, and we know that did not start in his pool. He took it away from Timber Trannel when he played him last week. I like the line of moving to attacks first. The Lash of Malice can really blow out a double block here, and Big Mac is very much incentivized to double block. The amount of options that Mist is working with here is just kind of overdone. I'm going to switch my prediction. I, I think that Mist is going to win this. Because if he lashes this, that basically just slams the door shut, right? This is insane. He's doing all of this with four mana. And still has enough left over to play a Roper. Big Mac sitting over here with a 1-1. One, one. Like, I got this, bro. You're going to be fine. He can now use the Sunrise to draw a card. He can use this to just as a removal spell for the Gargantua. I think I'd rather just play it and not have it fight the Gargantua and draw a card, gain some life, something that's going to be more impactful. Because like, you can still just jam it in front of the Gargantua, or you could chump block that and eat a 2-2. Two -two. So there's, there's some options. Time is getting a bit slim. Because there's kind of more options for Mist. There's not a ton of life gain in the deck to get the Roper untapped, but I can respect needing to kill it. I just, I don't know what he's going to do again about a 6-5. Sandu Stomper just terrifying on an empty board, like top deck or die. This is not going to work. That's six trample plus another two. Like, we can gain a little bit of life off the Glorious Sunrise, but I don't think it's enough. Let's just swing team here, and then Mac's going to need a hell of a draw, and I don't I don't think he has one. Looking through the list, there's, there's basically, like, we've got a, a, a card draw, maybe two, but there's no Wrath here. There's really nothing he can do about this. He's going to look at his card and then go to the sideboard. Just a brutal, brutal turn. And Max seen enough. We're going to the sideboards. And you, you can kind of start to see some of what's going on with the Mist deck here. It is a very powerful deck. Uh, the blue splash is for a Bergstrider and for activation of the Liara Land, uh, the Mirror Lake which is a clone for double green. It's just a very solid Golgari deck with excellent creatures, excellent removal. We're electing to side out the Stomper, bring in the Herd Gorger. Respectable. It's just, there's just great stuff in this pool for him. It certainly was, Goose. Like, it looked like having not enough lands was going to be a problem for the Mist, but... Many, many times people have said, screw beats flood. That is, being mana deprived in the early game is better than having too many, as long as you can stabilize. And Mist certainly proved that that's the case. Look at the quality of these cards, though. We've got Sarov's Packmate. There's some heavy hitting commons here. We even saw him use Drana's Silencer and kill something uh, last week. Ha <laughs> ha, can confirm. Very good opener. 
as long as the weaver survives. We don't have green. I imagine we'd like to have green. We may also have a text. That's the thing that can happen. It's okay. I think we keep this pretty happily, and the Quandrix campus is, is certainly nice to have. It is important to remember that blue is the splash, not a main color. It's a better start for Mac. No mana problems at all for the mist. Just draw the swamp right off the top. It was a very good keep, right? Because the Weaver of Blossoms means he doesn't have to worry about the mana that much. But just getting there is mighty nice. So we can Weaver to try to get ahead, or we can Roper if we're scared. Yeah, that's right, Jock. My apologies. I meant to say he doesn't have black. They're pretty good attack. Like, he can't really block either of these, uh, or the Battershield Warrior will pump them. So we're getting in four damage. Could also be combat tricks being represented here. I'm looking to see if we actually have any. Don't think that we have any combat tricks. I mean, we do have the boast, obviously. That may have just been not remembering what the boast card did. I've certainly been there too. Because I don't imagine he meant to chump block. Wait a minute, I'm the one that doesn't remember what the boast card does. They traded, and he was okay with that. Fair enough. I think I was looking through the deck list, and he double-blocked the darn thing, which was actually a really good play. It's like looking at his list, it maxes out at six mana, and he's got two things that can get him mana. He's also drawn another one. I think the Mist may actually be really good at magic and have a pretty good deck. And between the two of those things, he is very well positioned for this tournament. So we can do Ring and his choice of three drops here. The Roper is looking pretty good for the blocking. All right, Max got his card. It's the Glorious Sunrise. We can now start drawing more cards because we have the Celebrants in play. He's unlikely to want to attack with them. We got a little bit of a board stall here. Mac now has the Snow Mana to, or excuse me, Mist has the Snow Mana to lock something down if he'd like to. Which would sort of enable some attacks, but not a lot. Gonna go with the Bergstrider, presumably tapping down the Celebrants. Swinging with the Roper. Max probably just gonna take that. I don't really know why you would block. May have forgotten about the Necromancer. That's a tough one because with the Replicating Ring, uh, Mist can now cast the cards that are exiled with it and you don't even get your token. Like, I think you were supposed to take that damage. But Mac may still just be reeling from, from game one, because that was a really rough one. He's got card advantage locked down as long as he can not trade off creatures. He just needs to be able to kill the Necromancer, and he's got some removal spells, so we could see that happening soon. Take another swing. It doesn't feel realistic to block things here. Yeah, okay. We can just jam these two out, and if nothing else, we can start scrying with our Quandrix campus. Dual Craft Trainer, a solid card. Is it enough to get Mac back in this? I kind of feel like no.
is going for it with the big attack. But we can kind of just gang block the Knoll Hunter. Take the five. Or excuse me, ten. That's a lot of damage. We may have a game here. I think I just throw crap in front of the Knoll Hunter. Ten is a lot. It's twice as much as five. It isn't twenty. It also isn't seventeen. I think I like the Celebrant's attack. I'm not entirely certain I like the uh, Knoll Hunter attack. Because this isn't a bad trade-off for Mist, right? Like, he still gets his token. He's also got the Knoll Hunter to play next turn. The numbers don't lie, and they may spell disaster for Big Mac at Sacrifice. Oh, God. Got a Gargantua and a token or a Roper to Sacrifice to it. I think I like the attack with the Berg Strider. The downside is we're going to need to block next turn. Yeah, it depends on what gets sacrificed. I, I think I might actually sacrifice the Roper here rather than the token, but I don't know how many uh, life gain effects he has. We can only play one of these two. There's not functionally much difference between them. Double Strike and Trample is a little terrifying here. Okay, but we need it off the table. So does that mean we draw the card here? Or do we just activate it and get it off the table and, and go for the kill? Does he have the kill? He could have 5-5 five, five, Trampled double strike I think Mac may have just taken a game this just got a lot more interesting I don't think there's good blocks, but I'm going to trust that the mist will take a minute and make sure he's dead before he moves on to the next one. But that's what, 18 trample damage coming in? And we've got six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there's no good blocks. It's too much trample. We're going to get a game three. That's nice. I thought that one was basically done. There's solid quality cards in the sideboard for Mist. He's got a brutal pool. Sunrise is a powerhouse. It was a question of who was drawing more cards, though, right? Because the Mist was just drawing so many cards off that Necromancer. Was it really Goose? Yeah, I feel like the Roper probably should have been the Sacrifice, but again, he may have life gain in the deck that I just don't know about. We saw last week him having a lot of sequences with Elderfang Disciple uh, into the Gargantua. Quite the little combo there. Very reasonable keep. Top deck the land he needs and the Weaver of Blossom, so we're, we're good to go. This feels like a very good start for Mist.
got a uh, Prismari campus in Magstack. Uh, from the list I'm seeing, that that's not actually for anything other than being able to scry. He did side in the giant. That's fair. So there is a little bit of life gain. We we can pick it peek at the list briefly and see if there's anything else in here. See an infernal grasp. I can't. I don't think that's a life gain one. Yeah, I, I think the Cleric's actually the only thing that does gain life. We see Roper come down. Nodbold Recluse looking like it might have an attack. I'm going to take out the Knoll Hunter, which was going to grow. There was probably some argument taking out the spider pre prior to attacks, but again, Drawn of Silence are doing some work here as the Elder Fang Disciple is a cleric. So if you like to party, Drawn of Silencer has some thoughts for you. I think Matt can still be in this game if he can draw his card draw. And then the giant came down. That may be too much. That is a big giant. It is a large giant. See Mac hovering over it, reading it. He needs sunrise yesterday is what he needs. Ah, or sometimes you just squash a giant. Good timing too, because we just drew a clone on one of our lands. That's what the blue splash is for. If he didn't kill that giant right, then he could have been in trouble. I suppose the other side is maybe we could have tried to let them clone it, but taking seven's not a great idea either. Got a Weaver for Mac. This isn't looking unwinnable. It's still looking very favored for the mist, but we don't know what's in Mac's hand. Guiding voice, and what is that going to go fetch? Expanded anatomy. Okay, so he had two giants to gain life. Fair enough. There are ways to untap the Roper. And if he doesn't draw anything else, he's got enough mana to just use the Mirror Lake and make another 5-4. Like, he's continuing to just throw down big monsters. Interesting to see if he uses the Anatomy on the Celebrants or the Weaver. The Celebrant's already trades for the Ascetic. Using it on the Weaver would leave him a poor power creature to draw cards off of if he top decks Sunrise, assuming he doesn't already have it. I do agree, I think he needs it. Some decisions being made by Mac. I may see if we can switch over and see if his stream is going. We can see what he's thinking about. It looks like it is. And we could see that he played Expanded Anatomy. The delays are slightly off. He played Expanded Anatomy and Cleric Class. Yeah, I've, I've got to stick to this one so that those delays don't mess, me, mess with me. They're a few seconds off. My uh, tokens don't have a backside, so they can't flip. But whatever side it's on, it's going to stay on it. I like this attack by Mist. It's kind of daring Mac to block with the Celebrants. If he does, we can just make a copy of Drana's Silencer and kill the 6-6, six -six, which is what he wants done here. So imagine we're just going to use the Mirror Lake to copy the Silencer, get the 6 power out of the way. Play a creature land. Now Matt can get it back with the cleric class. Or he can just play a 6-6 six, six and gain 5 life. That doesn't seem too bad either. There are some haymakers going back and forth in this game. 
I think part of what Miss was thinking was that he could use the hive to then attack in and eat the five four, which he can still do uh, because of the menace here. That's a good line. He's able to attack for seven with the menace creatures. Get the four four out of the yard so he doesn't have to worry about it getting reanimated. And these are some swingy games. And able to empty his hand again. Now, from our brief peek over at Mac, we know that his card, he has at least one Celestial Unicorn in hand. We see it here. And we see him starting to cycle through to try to find something. I feel like he's just overwhelmed. Land the draw for Mist. Now, he doesn't technically have good attacks until he can get through the 6-6, six, six, and the life totals aren't quite low enough yet. So Max still has at least a little time. He can resurrect next turn with the Cleric class. We get to gain a little bit of life here. That'll put a counter on the Celestial Unicorn, as well as a counter on something else. Presumably the Cleric, so we'll have another blocker, but maybe he just wants a large Unicorn. There's the Canopy Bayloth. That is the card that's up for Ante for the Mist. I think he's regretting having played the Swamp out last turn, as he could have had an attack with it if he had a land. But respectable. You know, I said Mist was going to run away with this tournament. The way things are looking now, it may actually be Mac that's going to run away with this tournament because there's this card draw for his life gain. And remember, life gain is putting uh, counters on creatures. It's also his overrun. So he can just sit here, gain life, counter up his dudes and dudettes, make a large enough board and eventually overrun and get there. We may finally be seeing a loss from the mist, despite all of this value. Because at this point, even if he does draw a land and get to attack with the Baloth, is it that good? We're also in a scenario where he's got to kill things on Mac's board, but he's in the position of knowing that whatever he kills is just going to get reanimated again. Like, what is he supposed to target here to kill? The Hunter? No, it's just going to come back and gain even more life and put counters everywhere. The Unicorn? No, it'll come back and be just as big. Even killing the Dawnbringer Cleric isn't that great for him. Like, his only good choice is the Werewolf, and that doesn't even en enable any attacks for him. You can see him sitting here and pondering, what am I supposed to do with this? And the answer is probably pass and nothing. It's just a tad terrifying. Now, Mac hasn't transitioned to winning the game yet, but he has certainly stabilized. And he may be seeing if he's got room in his deck for that Canopy Bayloth after this one. I really didn't think he had this. This has been a good game to watch. Electing to draw a card instead. We're peeking at the graveyard to see what could come back. Not Vold Recluse, currently the winner. But Mac can kind of dig through until he finds something to win this with. What sort of things is he going to be looking for to close out the game? He's got another large drop. A Doomscar Titan It's probably his finisher. There's also a Beguiler in here, but it's a lot of ground creatures. Electing to kill the Unicorn, which I can respect. Yeah, Dual Craft Trainer again is probably what's going to do it. Fair enough. We're going straight for the card here off of the Packmate. It's a Lash of Malice, which could be all right. It could let him kill the Unicorn if it's reanimated before any of the counters get stuck. 
So I dig that. Getting another blood token for Mike. Getting the Roper out of here. See you later, Roper. Ford's starting to get a little clogged. And it's just a few units over there for Big Mac, but it's enough to hold back this entire army. We're going for the reanimation. If it's the Unicorn, we can kind of get some value here, and it is. But Mist was ready for this. The Unicorn is not actually coming back. There are still counters going about, but not here. Neek, don't worry about it. I play horribly every day, and it's my career. You're good, brother. So a little bit of value gain for Mist. But again, Mike can kind of just sit here and gain life and make large things. We could come to decking, which may be why uh, Mac has decided electing not to draw cards here. There's a Diagraph Horde. Surprising amount of graveyard hate in this deck. You, you keep thinking eventually we're going to overwhelm them, but there's so much life over there. Probably want to gobble the Unicorn, I would think. And maybe the Recluse or the Hunter. I don't suspect it matters that much. Wondering what Max got to work with over there. We can cash in a card if we need to. I really do wish I could. Okay, I see 15 over there, 15 to 18. Yeah, Mac is actually down cards. That may be why he's electing to gain life instead of draw more cards. So, like, we may be on this plan here is let's mill him out. Yeah, I think you've got some time, John. This game has gone very long. And I think it's going to... I do think it, it. there's a strong possibility it ends with milling out. Because so I think the only thing Max really got left is the dual craft trainer to try, try to close this out. Slinger can take out a zombie token, which is like, I don't know, a start? But not a lot of a start. Yeah, that's fine, John. Life totals continue to grow. Yeah, nothing really here. So this is this is just time now. Missed liking his odds. He's got the board clogged, and Mac is three cards deeper. 13 to 16. Mac is now electing to go deeper. So he, he thinks he has something in here that can win. I don't think it's a Sporeback Wolf. But I, sus I suspect, as Trannel mentioned earlier, the entirety of this plan by Mac is I'm going to go as wide as I possibly can, get the dual craft trainer, plus the team, and see what I can do. He may need to start making attacks before the Draugr Necromancer comes out, because I think trades are good for him now. Seeing the value of campuses as we're starting to scry,
Are we able to start swinging with a 6-6 six, six over there? Like at a certain point he has to, right? I guess he wants to make sure that when he attacks, he's definitely getting a two for one. Maybe doing some upkeep scrying for mist. I can remember setting those stops in Strixhaven as well. And this one is grindy. Mac taking a scry after the draw. Electing to go bottom with it. If it was a card he wanted, he could have drawn it with the uh, Sunrise, interestingly. Gaining more life, making a larger wolf, presumably. No, he's just kind of moving them around a little bit. I'm still not quite sure what the plan is to break through this, but I don't have the entire deck list in front of me. Well, I do, but my eyes have gotten old, as sometimes happens to people in their 40s, and I can't read it all from here. Scrying a land at the bottom, drawing a two-drop. This seems pretty comfortable to just continue to play dumb creatures and pass and put the onus on Mac. Find a way to kill me before you run out of cards. Very well could be, Timber. Very well could be. We didn't peek at Mac while he was sideboarding. So him electing to cycle through that mountain does lead me to believe that he has something he thinks can finish this. This may seem like basically infinite life. It's just a lot of life. It's an arbitrarily large amount. If the board is ever actually broken, you could chip away 50 life a lot faster than you might think. Scribe before draw. Getting that campus value. It's a replicating ring. Don't really need that. It's just more mana. Infused with Vitality is an interesting one. That gives a creature death touch and allows it to enter the battlefield again. So we could potentially use some of our enter the battlefield abilities here. Uh, we could gain a little bit of life, unless I'm mistaken. There's some uh, life gain on that card. Save something from removal. I don't think we're likely to drain Mac out with a flipped Bloodseeker, but if we were, this could be a step in the right direction for that. He's also making sure, uh, the Mist is making sure he's got enough lands in play to activate the Hive Tyrant land if he needs another blocker. <laughs> Leveling up! Thank you very much for the subscription and the year of support. Y'all spam some cats for leveling up lives. All right, we're finally pumping the team. Are we going to see a swing team here? We are. There's a few too many creatures, so I can't quite see what's behind them from the missed camera. But we'll find out here in a minute with this block. This has been quite the match already. Very interested to see how these line up and how the Infuse with Vitality works. It looks like this game will end in about five minutes, as that's how long the delays are, and I can see Big Mac and the Miss good gaming each, each other here in chat. This is just enough mana for him to be able to block with the Hive Tyrant and use the Infuse with Vitality. These are really, really good mana decisions from the Mist. Everything has trample. Everything looks scary. But there's so many good blockers. I gotta feel like the mist can get out of this. But there could be combat tricks. There could be any manner of things going on here on Max side. Remember, he has two cards. He's been drawing cards for a while. He's been scrying for a while. 
He's been building a plan. And he may have it figured out here. I'm wondering what we're going to do with the Infuse with Vitality. It seems like it would be nice to use on Adrana's Silencer, for example. And I'm sorry we can't see all, quite all of the creatures. I know if I switch over to Max Board, the delay will kind of spoil things. Uh, so we're just going to have to miss whatever's under the Mist's camera. All of these creatures have trample too, which is incredibly relevant when you're at 20. Would be interesting to potentially infuse with Vitality the uh, Elder Fang Disciple and try to get that last card out of Max hand. I'm incredibly curious as to what he has here. Even just activating the Pestilent Wolf would put through another three points of damage. The duel for dominance, which is an instant speed fight, and put a plus one plus one counter on your creature. We can see him here fighting the hive tyrant. Not really much we can do about that, so happens. And what are we infusing? Because it's time to make that decision. Oh, there's a smite the monsters coming down on the baloth. Mac did have a lot of things ready to go. A lot of intense combat math going on right now that I can't figure out, but we're just going to have to let Arena settle this all for us, and it'll be all sorted in just a moment. The Baloth is dead. Long live the Baloth. Blockers assigned. Damage coming in. Trample damage. Trampling over. Cats and dogs living together. Is Mist still alive, or is this game over? Okay, this board is a lot easier to manage now. Mist is still alive. We have the Silencer to come down. We can't quite kill anything. And it looks like we have a better board for Mac when all is said and done. Will we finally see Mist, the nemesis of the Sealed League, suffer a defeat? We know that he can get an Inkling Summonings with this. No, this is a bad time for the stream to pause. We don't need that. Let's try to switch over to Big Mac. Okay, we'll view the end of this from Mac's perspective because we know that he we, we know that Miss was gonna get the uh, inkling summonings. We can see here the heirloom was the draw. We play it, we pump them, we swing it, and we've got just enough. That was an incredible match of magic. Very good patience there by Mac to get the win. And I believe that's the first loss for the Mist. So he'll actually have to fork over one of the cards from his deck and let Mac play with it. All right, here we go with our feature match. We are watching Big Mac versus Trannel. What's at stake here, you might ask? That's a fair question. We have a Plains up for Big Mac, which is kind of a big deal. Uh, because again, if you start losing those, you're in a little bit of trouble. And we have a dual craft trainer up for grabs from Trannel. Big Mac is on the play with a two lander. And we're getting a little bit of hand hate here. Trannel has optimum mana so far with all three of his colors. I do agree with discarding a white card. We're electing for the unicorn. The reasoning would be we can curve the recluse into the trainer. We've drawn a mana source, but it's not the one we want. Duel for Dominance at instant speed can kill a 1-2, but I don't see why you'd want it to. And now we have Adelaine for Trannel, which is one of the better cards in his deck. Got a Lorehold Campus, which hurts a little bit, being that it's a tap land. No, you do not get infinite basics. You get six of each. Lose a basic, you may need to rebuild your deck. This is kind of a brutal curve out from Trannel. This game may be already over. Is 
this is the best Matt can, can put together. Even imprisoning the Adelaine doesn't really do enough, especially with a dual craft trainer about to start clocking in. Like, I think he's just dead. Like, that was just a 2-3-4 that, that is going to win a lot of games of Magic. Like, we'd love to keep up Death Touch. We're not going to have enough mana to do that. Like, we could play Honored Heirloom and fight a 1-2. And try to gang block Adeline, but, like, there's just not enough mana. There's not enough mana here to get anything going. You can see the dragon's already celebrating. This would be a huge win for Mac, because Dual Craft Trainer is one of the better cards in his deck, and getting a second copy of it would be basically insane. Mac said enough. We'll see you later. We could have drawn a card, but it's not going to do anything. Game over, man. Man, imagine after the, the the previous game that he played, which we watched uh, from the other perspective, now you get this. Grind a game out for 20 minutes. 30 minutes? Maybe longer. And then just dead to 2-3-4. Now, Trannel can't have every draw that good, can he? Surely not. Okay, we've got good mana. We've got a 2-3-4 of our own, including a newly added Canopy Baloth, which made its way to this deck courtesy of the Mist. Okay, so we've got an attack here. I, I think it's pretty obvious we just play out the Unicorn and try to get this going. Trannel has all three of his colors as well, is leading out with the Pledge Mage. And this seems like a pretty straightforward Baloth swing team to me. But we'll see what plan Mac elects to go for. That would leave you with the Recluse and Foretell the Titan the, the following turn, which seems pretty good. question here is what's in Trannel's hand because we've just seen these two decks trying to curve out on each other it's got an attack I think I'd be blocking this magic survivor I don't think I know about that one Alexis but I'd probably have enjoyed it whatever it is I like survivor I like magic all right, we've got a Vengeful Reaper and a Ghastly Gloom Hunter coming down for Trannel. Why did we elect to go with the Spider the previous turn, you reckon? Because I was pretty certain I wanted to do the Baloth for efficiency's sake. I guess he's just not wanting to foretell the Doomscar Titan. Like, it still has haste if you play it out. That's a Westgate Reagent. Yeah, nothing to think about here. We're swinging team because we have to get them to block with the Restgate Reagent. Otherwise, we die. That is the first time anyone has ever answered a Westgate Reagent and not two for one themselves. You saw it here. Make sure to remember this moment. If Trannel's got anything else, we're going to a game three. That might be enough to force it. I might have wanted to play the uh, Cleric and gain the life first. I guess it's not that big a deal.
Yeah, because they were going to trade anyway, so I don't think it actually matters. Excelling the reagent. I guess figuring the two life doesn't matter that much. That's reasonable. Okay, as it turns out, getting clerics out of the graveyard would have been nice. Trannel's got some spicy cards up his sleeves. It's worth noting that, yeah, there are two clerics there. And Mac is getting to exiling them as fast as possible. That heirloom is really, really doing some work here for Mac. A little bit of life gain from a Gloom Hunter. Puts a pip on the unicorn. Max draw for the turn is nada. We can at least make sure there's no clerics to come back if Aura Shenanigans get started. We do have a decent attack here in the mana to activate the Pestilent Wolf. The problem is the crackback from Aura could be a thing. So what happens if you just throw... Yeah, okay, the life total is too low. This is good calculus by Mag. I think you need to kill Aura. This is this is really difficult magic. Look at this, how tight this is. We got the unicorn off the table, but now we're facing down a life linker and we effectively can't race our opponent, but we do have their scaling monster out of the way. However, the Markov Waltzer would like to dance, and I'm guessing we're going to a game three here. This should be too much for Mag to be able to recover from. He's got a turn or two. Not a lot of time. The life total pendulum begins to swing. Trennel selecting to go in the air. He's still got three cards over there too. We don't know exactly what they are. The orator should close this out as if it wasn't already closed. Yeah, this game's over. Game's over. We're gonna go to a game three. No, we're not going to a game three. Trennel won the first one. This has to be game over, man. Yeah, I do believe that's game over for Big Mac. Yeah, game over, man. Game over. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons. Paul, Punk, Hero, Joe, Jesse, Jacob, Scott, Fasty, Rich, Michael, Brandon, and John. Thank you very much. We'll see you back next week with more Anti-League.